Welcome back to Bristol Dragway, where night has fallen, and we are getting set for the finals of the Winston Noble Showdown. Just a few moments ago, Allen checked in in the Bob Vandergriff pit area. Standard maintenance in the Vandergriff camp includes changing motors. New bullet for every round. As we go into the final of the No Bull Showdown, it's just like it's supposed to be. Number one qualifier in Dragster against number one qualifier in Funny Car. What's it going to take to beat John? Oh, we're going to have to step it up. You just seen a 487 out of that car over there, and this one's going to have to run a low 50. It's capable of it. Ray's going to stand on it. We don't have any other choice. You better look out. i got to believe reaction times are going to play into this. You run a 59 or a 60 flat with a good light. Well, uh, he's got quite an advantage. 3700s is a big deal, and if we're both on time, I'm going to need to run a low 50. So uh, we're going to give it a shot. we got nothing to lose, and we're going to try and hold up the Dragons' side of the deal. You know, I can't believe it. He didn't think of kryptonite. How else would you beat Superman? With a quick elapsed time, maybe, huh? While the Nitro cars have been battling to the final round, we've also had action in a number of other categories, including Pro Stock Truck. A 12-truck field started action here this weekend, and we're down to the last two. Randy Daniels up against Brad Jeter. Jeter beats Sirachi in the first round, then Freeman the victim in round number two. Brad got a bye in the third round, while on the other side of the ladder, it was Randy Daniels beating Spitzer, Smith, and Johns. The finals now between two Chevrolet S10 pickup trucks. Randy Daniels celebrating his birthday today on the far side of the racetrack, the Carl Chevrolet truck of Brad Jeter in the near lane. A oh, happy birthday to Randy Daniels as Brad Jeter just gave him the biggest present he's going to get this weekend. Brad with a red light at the starting line. Randy Daniels winning $15,000 with a 771. It's Pro Stock Motorcycle coming up next. Let's take a look and see how these two finalists, Matt Hines and David Schultz, got there in the semifinal round. It was Hines in the near lane. His competitor, John Smith, on the far side of the racetrack. This just a bit earlier in the semis. A red light by John Smith. Matt Hines blasted his way across the quarter mile stripe. 737 at 185 miles an hour. Meantime, David Schultz was in the far lane up against the number two qualifier, Angel Sealing in the near lane. Maybe it's something in the air because Angel Sealing left a red light at the start. David Schultz broke at the line. He didn't even move three feet, but the automatic disqualification of Sealing gave him the win. He made it to the finals to race Matt Hines. Here were his competitors along the way. You see how each side of the ladder got to the championship round. Here in the darkness at Bristol Dragway, the championship of the Winston Noble Showdown for Pro Stock Bikes at stake between Matt Hines and David Schultz. Both of these riders are champions. Earlier this year, Matt Hines won the race at Joliet. David Schultz has not won an NHRA national event since 1997. The Noble Showdown. Matt Hines goes 734 at 185. Ten thousand dollars going to the coffers of Vance and Hines Racing, based upon this win. Let's go to Allen. The Noble Showdown winner gets hats, gets jackets, gets a great big check. Man, it's awesome. Uh, we've been struggling all season long, and it's great to get a ten thousand dollar check here at the Winston Showdown Man, after winning last year at the Invitational. It's when some people have been treating me pretty good lately. The only thing missing this weekend was points, huh? Yeah, you know, uh, I just wanted to come out here and try to get myself in tune because last race I couldn't cut a light, and uh, this race I think I did a pretty good job. Time now to take a look at the action in the pro stock category, the four-wheeled version. Before we see the finals, let's go back to round number two racing where a pair of Johnson squared off. It was the GM Goodwrench Service Plus Pontiac of Warren in the far lane. Alan Johnson in his Food City Amoco Dodge Avenger was in the near lane. Watch the near perfect light by Alan Johnson and watch the results.
Alan Johnson had a 4.06 reaction time. His elapsed time on the run, 7.06, good enough to beat the 6.97 by Warren Johnson. In the semis, Alan Johnson was in the far lane. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. He left a red light against Troy Coughlin. That moved Troy to the final round. The other pair in the semis, Troy's brother Jake was in the near lane against Greg Anderson, the former crew chief for Warren Johnson. Jake won seven flat to a 7.03. So the number one qualifier, Jake, meets his brother Troy in the final round and all Jake Coughlin finals. You know, Dad Jake Sr. has got to be proud of this moment. There's a lot of money at stake here as well. The winner gets $50,000 in this Winston Noble showdown. Matching Oswald Bills, 500 cubic inches, carbureted on gas. Nearly perfect reaction times and nearly identical, but Troy having problems has to shut it off. And Jake Coughlin wins the Winston Noble showdown and the 50 grand. Seven flat at 196. Look at this, a 417 light for Jake, a 418 light for Troy. He had some tire shake. Here's the view from the passenger seat on Troy's car. Let's go to Allen. On what is already a pretty spectacular resume, now we can add Winston Showdown Champion for Jake Coughlin Jr. Hey, thank you very much. Thanks, Alan. I tell you what, uh, you know, it was, uh, again, uh, just an excellent weekend for the whole Jags team. And, uh, you know, Troy and I to run in the final, we certainly didn't foresee uh, having any lane issues out there. But, uh, you know, it was a no-lose situation for us. Our whole team's just done one heck of a job. Dick Mask and uh, my dad, Jeg, uh, we just couldn't be more excited heading into Denver. Coming up next, the Fuel Duel of the Century.